Let's talk about how to add a realistic fog to any photo in Photoshop. The first step that you need to do is of course create a selection of your background, especially if you don't want this to apply to your subject. That way you'll have some nice layered effects with your fog. In this particular case, I've already gone ahead and created a selection for this tutorial because we're talking about fog and not about selections. If you need to learn about selections though, you can learn how in this video here. Now anyways, I'm going to load up my selection by going to select load selection and then choose my subject and rocks selection and click OK. Now since I am selecting the rocks, I'm going to invert this selection so I'm only selecting the background. We can invert the selection by pressing command or control shift and I or we can click on the invert button inside of the contextual taskbar. Now we are selecting the background in the photo. Now the first step in adding fog is to reduce the contrast in the areas you want your fog to appear. Because at the most basic level, fog is just low contrast. So to do this really easily, while our selection is active, we'll go to our adjustments panel and choose the curves adjustment layer. That will automatically apply that active selection onto our curves layer mask. So anytime we make an adjustment, it will only apply to the background. Now to reduce the contrast of this background area, we simply need to click on this black point of the curves adjustment and click and drag it upwards to lighten the contrast of the darkest tones in the photo. So of course, if you want a really foggy image, we are going to lift that black point up a long ways, but if you don't want something as intense, we can bring that down. So you make this adjustment however you see fit. In this case, I'm going to do a fair amount of fog like this. But when we think about fog, it generally is applying more to a lower area and less so in upper areas. So that's where we're going to use a gradient to help refine our adjustment. Clicking on our curves adjustment layer mask indicated by that white box, we're going to select our gradient tool by pressing G. Up in the options bar, we'll choose the classic gradient and then click on the gradient editor go into the basics folder and choose the foreground to transparent gradient. We'll click OK. With the linear option enabled, mode set to normal, opacity 100%, dither and transparency enabled with the method set to perceptual, we'll make sure that our foreground color is set to black. Still with that curves adjustment layer mask selected, we can click and drag down from the top of the image to hide that adjustment. If it feels too intense, you can of course reduce the opacity of your gradient, but in this case, I'm happy with how that looks and I might just click and drag out a couple more times to further reduce the intensity of this curves adjustment. So essentially what we've done here is told Photoshop with our layer mask that we only want this low contrast effect to appear in the bottom area and not so much in the upper area where we have painted our gradient. So now we have the base point of our fog adjustment, but we're missing some texture. So that's where some brushes will come into play. Now I'm going to use my cloud brushes that you can find over in my store. I'll leave a link for those below this video if you want to check them out. But the brushes that I'll be using, I've already imported. So I'll grab my brush tool by pressing B, go to my brush panel and choose the Be Will Creative Cloud Brushes. In this case, I'm going to choose the Cloud Brush 20, and this is a nice general brush for fog in my opinion. Setting my foreground color to white, which is the color of fog, we'll go to the Brush Settings panel, and if you don't see this panel, just go up to Window, and down here to Brush Settings to reveal it. But inside of our Brush Settings panel, we'll go to the Shape Dynamics, and go to the Angle Jitter, and increase this amount to whatever you'd like. I'm gonna do around 60%. Now what this will do is when we click and drag out, it will allow us to apply a randomized rotation to our brush so that the cloud texture looks a little bit more realistic. With all of these settings good to go, I'll create a new layer above my curves adjustment, double click on the name and call it to fog texture. Now, if we go and click and drag over the photo, you'll notice that we have this sort of cloud look to our brush, but this is a little too intense for my taste. So I'll press command or control Z to undo that. Going up to the brush settings, I'll adjust the flow to be around 50 to 80%, depending on the intensity that you would like for your fog.
Now with that complete, we can scale down our brush and paint a little bit of fog in the background here as needed in little patches. If your adjustments still feel too intense, we can click on that fog texture layer and just bring down the opacity of that layer like so until you're happy with the result of that. Now we can just continue to paint our fog as needed around our photo adding that nice fog texture wherever we click. For the more foreground area, I'm going to reduce the opacity of my brush so it's less intense. I'll choose an opacity around 20% for this particular case. And now we can go and paint around the foreground this time. Once you're happy with your fog adjustments, if there are any areas that you feel like you went a little bit overboard, we can use a layer mask on the fog texture layer. Clicking on that fog texture layer and clicking the layer mask icon to apply a new layer mask, we'll set our foreground color to black with all of the same brush settings as before. This time, anywhere that we paint on this layer mask, we're going to remove visibility from the fog texture layer. So clicking and dragging in different areas like so, I'm just reducing the visibility of fog in different areas to refine the result as I'd like. Once you've gone through and adjusted the image to your liking, we can look at our before and after, and we have successfully added some fog into this image. Now, like I said earlier, if you want to get a copy of these same cloud brushes for yourself, I'll leave a link for them down below this video, but this technique will still work with whatever cloud brushes you try to use. The main takeaway should just be that using the low contrast as well as a brush to add texture is the key to add realistic fog inside of Photoshop.